Hello again, you sick, twisted weather freaks, and welcome to another fun-filled, action-packed, and intellectually stimulating edition of This Week in Weather. I'm your host and meteorologist, D.T., from weatherrisk.com. The chrono of confusion, the captain of catastrophe, the commander of chaos. It's time to talk about weather, and uh, lots to talk about here. Well, obviously, the main issue for the eastern half of the country is going to be Hurricane Matthew, which is a mighty hurricane indeed. Let's take a look at it. Uh, our topics, Matthew, Matthew, Matthew. And we're not quoting scripture here. We're talking about the hurricane. Uh, this is the 11 a.m. advisory, 2 p.m. advisory, which is essentially the 11 a.m. advisory unchanged. Winds are still 145 miles an hour. It's moving northwest at 5. And you can see the track. And notice that uh, you know the hurricane center keeps wobbling back and forth as to whether or not it's going to hit the far eastern tip of Cuba or go over the far uh, peninsula there of Haiti, or even in between the Windward Passage. So, uh, but uh, And then you can see, notice that after 8 a.m. on Wednesday, we see a bit of a northwest track here, a jog. And that's why this is very important, because if Matthew were to cut across eastern Jamaica and then east central Cuba, and you had that same northwest jog, it would place it very close to the coast of Georgia, South Carolina. So that's why the turn before it reaches Jamaica is so important. Okay. Um, let me go to the next slide here. Here, uh, here you are. Now, this is the latest satellite picture. As of uh, 2, 3 o'clock this afternoon, you can see the infrared. The eye is very pronounced. It's definitely a, a strong 4, borderline 5 hurricane. Very pronounced system, looking absolutely spectacular. And this uh, image here also has the white line, shows the actual track, and now the current track of the, from the latest hurricane center. So, so far, things looking pretty good. This is the visible satellite picture. The eye is not completely clear, but it's mostly clear. Very impressive looking satellite picture as well. All right, let's take a look at the different players, what's going on here with this feature. Now, this gets a little interesting, so let's pay attention and see what's going on. Obviously, the main feature here is this upper low, which we can put in right there. Now, that's the feature which has been um, uh, giving all the heavy rain over the last several days to much of the Mid-Atlantic region. As many of you know, we had rainfall amounts in some places as high as 8 or 10 inches. And it was because this upper low was parked over Kentucky and we're getting strong south winds feeding the moisture in and then southeast or east winds at the surface enhancing the moisture. And uh, we had all those tremendous rains. But that upper low is still there. Now, the other feature we have to draw attention to here is this, which is the ridge. You can see the ridge right there. Now, um, obviously, what's happening is uh, as you get, um, let me get my marker out here, as you get, there we go. You can see with the uh, flow coming in this way between the upper level low and the ridge and that's what was producing all the rain here so we know that now uh the issue of course is there's a deep trough on the west coast and that's developing a ridge over the eastern united states now once the upper low moves out of the way that's when things get interesting so our key issues of course remains where does matthew cross from the atlantic into i mean from the caribbean into the atlantic does it cross over far eastern Cuba, far western Haiti, or maybe even the Windward Passage itself, right in between? Now, Matthew will turn back to the northwest October 5 and 6. There's no doubt about that. All the models show it. But the issue is for how long? And how close does he get to the South Carolina, North Carolina coast? And then the key... Key point number three, there is that huge trough on the west coast, which I just showed you, which moves into the Rockies and the Plain States by October 5 and then drives into the Midwest and with a uh, with the trough and the surface cold front reaching the Ohio Valley by October 7th. And that's clearly going to cause the hurricane to turn to the north and then north northeast. So let's take a look at this. This is the European model from this morning. We can see very important features. Now look at the trough to begin with. You remember before it was on the Pacific Northwest? It's already into the Northern Rockies. The upper low, which you can see there off the coast of New England, let me put out a marker just to remind you of what we're looking at here. This upper low here, this feature is going out to sea. And once it leaves, what it does is it allows the ridge, which we can point here, the ridge here, it allows that ridge to... Um, to expand and build northwestward into uh, North Carolina, Virginia. Once this goes away, the ridge gets to build in this direction. And what that does is, here's Matthew. That forces Matthew to turn to the northwest. And we can see it. There's a surface cold front on the right-hand side. We can see that as well. Okay, so that's the map valid for uh, 8 p.m. October 4 from the Sunday morning European model. Now, here is the one for valid for October 6, 8 p.m., 
what's happened is the upper low is out of the way. And like we said, the upper ridge, you can see that very clearly, has now built in here. And as a result, uh, Matthew has to go this direction, has to go around the ridge. The trough, meanwhile, is still coming east and still approaching it. So it's going to be a very interesting fight to see how this all plays out here. There's your surface cold front right here. You can see on the right-hand side. And there's Matthew, you can see. So does Matthew go in like this? Does it go right along the coast? A lot of different possibilities. And again here, as you can see from the text, any delay in the Midwest trough or the cold front greatly increases the chances of Matthew clipping or hitting the southeastern U.S. coast. If anywhere from Charleston up to Hatteras or maybe even into uh, Nags Head or Virginia Beach. Can't rule that out. Any delay in the arrival of the trough of the cold front Will mean a shift or another 50 miles 75 miles to the northwest and that could have major implications for the east coast all right now this is the european model that at 144 hours again this is the sunday morning european and what do we see the ridge look where the ridge is now the ridge is being squeezed but it's still there so what's happening is the hurricane is now going this direction going around the flow of the ridge the ridge flows this direction okay so the hurricane is now doing this and here's their trough coming east. And once that trough gets in a certain distance relationship, about 11 degrees of latitude within the hurricane, it's going to turn that sucker and turn the north, northeast, and then out to sea. But when does that occur? That's the issue. The, as, the text, as the Midwest trough comes east and the surface cold front reaches Ohio, Kentucky, Tennessee, this forces Matthew to turn to the north late on October 7th. Will Matthew parallel the coast, but not hit it directly? Will it be a glancing blow over east of North Carolina and possibly southeastern Massachusetts? Or three, will it be a direct hit for the coastal uh, South Carolina, North Carolina, Southeast Virginia, the lower, east, lower Maryland Eastern Shore, up into southern New Jersey, and even southeast New England, which is what the 6Z GFS was showing. So a lot of different possibilities here. And then finally, this is the uh, European uh, for day 7 here for October 8th, 8 p.m. Matthew has now turned to the north. Look at the high coming down from the Great Lakes. A lot of cool air here, pushing the, the, the front now to the south. So Matthew has to turn. We see the trough now here uh, on the... Um, on the east coast, uh, excuse me, the trough now over the Midwest. You can see it right here. Let me highlight it so you can see it. There it is. And there's Matthew. So it's going to have to turn at this point. And this is simply a, a matter of physics. The trough is going to catch it and it is going to turn it. But like I said, when you have a big hurricane like this category three or four hurricane on the southeast U.S. coast in the Gulf of Mexico, in the Gulf Stream, a 50 miles, 75 miles, a huge difference in where it could go. So we're just going to have to watch it. It is not possible five, six, seven, eight days out to know where the turn, when the how far to the northwest is going to go, when it's going to turn to the north, whether it's going to clip Hatteras or pass over Hatteras, whether it's going to reach Charleston, whether it's going to hit Norfolk. We just don't know that at this particular time. So I think it's going to turn before it gets there, but I could be wrong. Got to tell you, it's a tricky situation. Okay. Now, let's look at the European ensembles. Most of the European ensembles, as you can see, keep Matthew off the coast. So we are getting a bit stronger agreement now here with the European ensembles. Look at the vast cluster of them are here. This is valid as of 7 p.m. October 7th, 8 p.m. October 7th, I should say. So 8 p.m., okay, the, the October 7th. Let me mark it in as you can see. Okay, and then here it is going out like this way. So most of the European ensembles, that's a good sign if you don't want a big hurricane on the East Coast. The European ensembles taken as a spread, you can see most of them have it paralleling the, the Georgia, well, the South Carolina, North Carolina, Southeast Virginia coast, and then passing south and east of Cape Hatteras. Not all of them, most of them. And if you look at the ensemble mean in terms of the hurricane intensity, uh, if you look at, let's say, 144 hours out, 156 hours, which is uh, right here. Let me uh, I'll look at my marker out so you can see what I'm referring to. 156 hours out right here. A lot of the models, look at the purple in here, are showing, uh, that purple represents 931 to 950 miles. That's, that's, a, that's a Category 4 hurricane. Most of the members are showing a Category 4 hurricane in this time frame. You can see the vast majority of them are showing a hurricane that strong. So that's pretty impressive. Um, so, uh, you know, with, that's, that's a good sign uh, you know, for intensifying hurricane, not a good sign for the East Coast. Now, let's look at the 6Z GFS. Well, we saw a lot of people already saw this. Look where it takes the system. Here's 72 hours on the morning of October 5th on the left-hand side, uh, the 2 p.m. October 6th, and then 2 p.m. October 7th. Again, notice the track here. The track is clearly in this direction, going around the high. 
It just has to go around the ridge in the southwest Atlantic. That ridge is known as the Western Atlantic Ridge, but you may also refer to a herd of it as the Bermuda High. It's the same feature. And then here it is close up. I, I, I got a zoom in here. Uh, again, this is from Tropical Tidbits. Thanks, Levi, for letting me use your maps. And you can see the hurricane. Matthew is now a Category 2 hurricane over Nags Head, North Carolina, pummeling the hell out of Virginia Beach and Norfolk. And then over just to the east of New York City, going right up along the coast, hitting the Salisbury Wild, Silent Atlantic City, just to the east of New York City, Central Long Island, and into, uh, I guess that's New Haven or... Uh, uh, yeah, New Haven, Central Connecticut. So this would be a huge hit for the East Coast. Um, but uh, that's as, as impressive as it is, I don't think that's going to happen. It might. I don't think it is. Uh, if you look at the CAC, this is the 6C GFS Ensemble. So again, uh, let me highlight the feature you can see what I'm referring to here. This here is the 6Z GFS Ensemble right there. For some reason, the market's a car. Yeah, you can see. Anyway, and you can see what it does is it takes it uh, clearly. Um, there's 990, 991. It takes it parallel the coast and then off the coast. It's the same track as the 6E, except instead of being here, it's over here. So, um, you know, it, or I, we can't tell at this point how far to the northwest is going to be. We're just something to wait and see. Maybe as we get closer to the event, we'll have a better idea. But right now, we don't. And now this is the midday models here. So let's take a look at what we're seeing in midday. The shifts, Matthew shifts back to the east. It's a long duration event. And again, 50 to 100 miles could be huge impact for many of the coastal areas. Now, this is the GFS from the last several runs. Notice the tracks on the GFS all continue to take it over eastern Cuba. And there's hit the western coast of Haiti. But the European tracks take it over Haiti, not in eastern Cuba. Have to wait and see what it does. This is the 12Z GFS. Now, the 12Z GFS is not on the coast, as you can clearly see. It takes it in the northwest track, like, like this, and now it's going due north, and then it hooks it this way. And you can see it passing way to the south and east of Hatteras. So that's a significant shift from the 6Z run. And that's just shows you the variability of the models here. And if we look at the ensembles, this is the uh, GFS ensemble. Again, this is the 12, Sunday afternoon GFS, the 12Z run. This is valid for the 8 a.m. on October 4. It's right there in the Windward Passage, as you can see. Now it's going through the Bahamas, going almost due north. Now going north-northwest, approaching South Carolina coast on the morning of October 7th. And now, boom, it kicks it to the northeast on the morning of October 8th as the cold front arrives and the upper trough. That trough cannot be denied. It will turn Matthew to the northeast. Don't doubt it. Don't go against it. Don't bet the house money. You will lose. This trough is going to turn it. The question is where and where. Have a look at the European for this Sunday afternoon. The European does the same sort of thing. It rebuilds the hurricane after it crosses uh, Haiti or eastern Cuba. And the 939, very powerful hurricane uh, in the Category 4, as you can see. And the hurricane track is clearly going in this direction uh, from the eastern Bahamas going like this. No doubt about it. And a very impressive looking system. Slow moving system as well. Not, not in any hurry here. And then if we look at the extended runs and look at 934 south of southeast of Wilmington, I mean, good googly moogly. Now, that's probably overdone, but that's a monster hurricane. That's a strong four. And uh, it's still there at 180 hours, if you can believe that, as a category three. Now, here's the track. You see the red dots there, 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 there. See what I'm doing here? You can see the connected dots. There's a definite hook here. Uh, by, but look how far out in time. This is October 9th. Are you kidding me? We got to deal with this through the 9th of October. I'm never going to get any sleep. All right, now if we look at the 12Z uh, European, the upper air maps, we can clearly see here the ridge very high. Let me highlight so you can see what I'm talking about. Here's the ridge right like this, okay? And here's the trough. Look at this sucker. This thing is mean business. And there's Matthew. So Matthew goes around it like this, around the edge of it, as this thing comes closer and then kicks it, boom, out to sea. We'll see the next slide here. This is valid for 2 o'clock on October 7th. There's the ridge. Very powerful still. Still in place here. Look at this monster. And it's forcing the hurricane to turn north. It looks like it's going to hit central North Carolina. But here comes Mr. Trough and Mr. Cold Front. And it's not going to be denied. And then finally, by the, the October 7th, it's actually the, the trough lifts to the north a little bit. The hurricane is still very slow, very slow to move. And then finally, it kicks it. It's turning it to the northeast, following the Gulf Stream and the path of least resistance on October 9th. I'm never going to get any sleep on this thing. And you can see, uh, you know, this is where it comes out of on the 84, 84 hours coming out of the northwest. In any event, 
that's the production. That's my latest video. We're just going to have to wait and see where, how far to the northwest it moves on the Bahamas um, and the speed of it as well. You know, if it moves very slowly to the Bahamas, it'll stay over a lot of warm water, but that allows the trough and the cold front to come in faster and kick it. If it moves at a decent clip, it'll get very close to the Carolina coast and it could clip uh, Wilmington and Hatteras and Elizabeth City and Moorhead City and maybe even Virginia Beach. So we, and then, of course, even eastern Long Island and southeastern Massachusetts. Just going to have to wait and see and plot this very carefully. This is meteorologist DT from weatherist.com. I'll talk to you soon.